All right, here we are we're fixing to fire up a Camaro and initial fire up of Carlos Camaro. So make sure ain't nothing leaking, everything's good. Make sure we got some fuel. Uh, spin it over some more till I get some fuel. I said, tell me when to start back. That carburetor's too small, too. Are you serious? Very. We're going to have to get like an 850? No, we need a real 750, not this vacuum secondary. Either that or the fuel pump. Yeah, yeah it still didn't sound right. So we got a different distributor. Uh, we're just problem troubleshooting here. Uh, put new plugs in it. New plugs helped a little bit, but it's still got a, an erratic ignition. So it could be that war slap out junk old distributor. So we got another distributor we're going to put in it. If this don't work, we're going to put MSD in it and put 850 on it and electric fuel pump and everything else. <laughs> so reach back in there and pull your distributor out. She already got the, the bolt and all that stuff off of it. There's a rag right there. The trick with it is to get it to drop into number one. You can start over like this. Oh. There you go. Should drop right in on number one. So. Usually it's a lot harder than that. <laughs> yep, it was in like that. Like yep. So we'll get the distributor in, hook the plug wires up on it. Set that cap on there and see what it does with that. Swap distributor and she fired right up and is a lot better. Carburetor, this little Dookie 750. It is a 750. See, I just put 600 balls on it. Uh, run out of fuel, but it is running. All right, fire it. Stuck. I was in here no. ready to cut it off. She's out of gas. All right, so we'll go get some fuel and then try again. All right, so we upgraded it, upgrade it real quick to a QFT uh, 850. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Love um, you. A little 750 just ain't big enough. So we'll see what this does. I spin her around and let's get some fuel to it and see what's what.
I set I set this carburetor up to run. It, it ran amazing on Colton's S10 with the tune that's in this carburetor. Now, might be a little big for this motor, but it's the only other carburetor I got laying around that I can stick on something. So we'll see. Spin it over, see what it does. It needs, we'll probably put a mechanical, I mean electric fuel pump on it and uh, time it needs to be tweaked a little bit. But she was getting a little warm. You should have took that video when it was running like it after you turned the idle down. All right, so here it is. Uh, what is the day? I don't know, day after yesterday. <laughs> Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. Um, got a one inch spacer on it. Uh, run through the valves and there was two valves that was pretty loose. I mean like pretty badly loose. So... We are going to see what we can do today. We just want to hear it sit here and run and idle for a minute. Uh, probably gonna be a little cold. again. not the cleanest in the world but uh we got to put some different locks on the rockers because keep wanting to come loose or just wore out uh this is an 850 that i put on it which is a little bit too big you can hear it kind of gurgling on uh, at idle so i'm gonna put a the 650 that i was building for it i just ain't built it yet because i can't find my secondary metering plate for it i don't know what to do with it i think it's in the other 850 but this is dennis's we threw it on there uh timing ain't right because i don't have my timing tape on and i don't got my timing light but we just wanted to hear it <laughs> Make make noise. It'll be. Yeah. You've seen all my other motors. It, it'll be tuned in perfect. This thing will. It'll be amazing when it's done. But this is just to hear it and make sure the oil pressure stuff was solid and everything else. Put a little heat in it and it's good. So 
We're gonna put the MSD on it. We'll get rid of that HEI because HEI suck. So we'll put the MSD on it and fine tune her in. But we got to put the radiator and the pulleys and all that stuff, and put her calipers on. Get brakes. Get it cooling. Then hook up the transmission and stuff. And then once that's done, we can move it around. Then we move the interior, which is a mess. It looks a lot worse than what it really is, though. I mean, it just needs to be cleaned and yeah. throw the carpet and stuff in it. Yeah. A little paint and. I mean, like that back there and the headliner yeah. and everything is in perfect condition. Yeah, as good as it can get. But just the little things. That's all we're doing. I just we just want to hear this motor run. So it ran fine in my car and it'll run way better than this one. I give it the compression the cam wanted. So it ought to, it ought to yank this car around pretty good to have a 342 gear in it. So be weary at red lights. <laughs> <laughs> but so cool. Still got that gurgle. That's because that's the carb's too big. Yeah. When that gurgle, the carburetor's too big. But all in all, it's pretty awesome. So far, it's that better than it sounded with that little carburetor. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, see, we went from way too small. Even the vacuum secondary 750 was too little, which I know everybody likes vacuum secondary carburetors. They work. You can tune them to work. I have a double pump on everything. <laughs> you got to because you rely on that secondary to come in. And they're good for mileage, but nobody gives a crap about mileage. Yeah, we're not building this car for gas mileage. No, it's the <laughs> amount of miles and the fun you have and the amount yep. of miles you go before you got to fill it back up. But it will be good. We got to do all the, put the, all the trim and all that crap on it, and which we'll do right before we paint it or right after we paint it, we'll put all that stuff on. But biggest thing that fires up and runs, so. And this cam always sounded a little odd with open, with open headers. It sounds like an old circle track car. That cam always sounded like that because that's what that cam was for. It's for circle track. Uh, special purpose. So you put exhaust on it, it'll sound, oh, sound so much better. I've got some good flow there. masters that dad gave me. Yep. Uh, two chamber, I believe. Two, two chamber flow masters for it. And... So yeah, cool. I like it. I feel better now. Yeah. But yeah, one of them quick fuels. And this carburetor, the reason it's partially so fat at idle, it would probably run fine with that carburetor, but I deleted the power valve in it when we were racing because and you can run with power valve without power valve. You just got to step the jets up way up. This has got 84, 84 squared with no power valve. And I did that at the track because it picked up, what, four tenths yeah. doing that? That carburetor picked up four tenths on Colton's motor. So it's set up to race, not to put around and go to cruises. So... We'll put one on it. It's got a power valve stuff in it. 650 or 750. I got both of them. But, but yeah, so cool. Cool, cool, cool. Check it out a little. My bump starter broke, so we did this. <laughs> it worked perfect. Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> oh, cool. Good deal. I'm happy with that. Yeah, me too. Now to get some calipers. See, I, I, nobody's seen this because I did this when I had the flu. I was out here laying on this car sick with the flu. Yeah, because you the... laid in the house for four days and couldn't take it anymore. Yeah, I, got, I was losing my mind. So I got uh, new brake lines and stuff for the front. We're going to pull the headers off and paint them. Uh, I got the brake lines and stuff for the front. I got another master cylinder that I got to put on. Uh, probably just get one that's for this car. The one I got come off the S10. We'll probably just get one that's for this. So all this will fit right in there. I don't have to make it. But just so a lot of little piddly stuff. We got pulleys. Thanks, Kerry Fox. We got all kinds of pulleys. Yeah, we essentially have just about everything we need to put this car together. It's just a matter of puzzle putting it together. it together. Yeah. If anybody knows of a 1980 Camaro gas tank. Really need one of them I and a really drive shaft. I really need one of those, yes. All right, now I'm putting the new moldings in. Weather stripping, I mean. Just putting up a little bit of a fight. All right, uh, we got her molded on. The sealant's just curing. Uh, weather stripping, not molding. Weather stripping on both sides. All this was fitting the door panels and put a carpet in to see what it looked like. It's gonna be good. That right there makes the whole car look so much better. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like an actual car. So that's cool. Uh, we was playing around with anodized paint. She wanted purple anodized valve covers and breather. So we went and got some purple anodized. And this is legit purple anodized. Chemically anodized. This is the paint. And it is pretty close. 
they finally come out with a paint that actually looks like real anodized, which is cool. So, got some valve covers. I got some old chrome Moroso valve covers we're going to paint with that. That's the one I clear coated. It's a little more shiny, but it changed the color. She didn't like that color. She said that looks more pink than purple, which it is a lighter color. But yeah, I just like that better. It'll be covered up, shadowed anyhow, so it'll be all right. Even with the crappy dash and everything, it still looks good. Hell, the dash is in good shape. It's just dirty. <sighs> Thanks. Sorry. <laughs> so, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we gotta we gotta trim the carpet and all that stuff, and then probably just use the back seat to come out of it and shoot it black whatever just whatever color she decides to do the interior probably just be black or whatever color she decides to do the interior and seats we'll shoot the, the back seat the same color and it'll be tucked in there it just sucks because it's got a rip in it but see. yeah right there we can sew it up it'll be all right yeah you could if you sew it up and paint it it'll be fine yeah it ain't no big deal it Get all that stuff done. Got to put a radiator in it. And radiator. Got to put the calipers on. Uh, put the new master cylinder on it. Uh, drive shaft. Hook up a shifter and stuff. Which we got a shifter for it. Go ahead and grab your shifter. Let's see what your shifter looks like. Uh, Mark sent her this shifter off YouTube. Mark Beast from the East is what his YouTube uh, user is. He said, I got some stuff for Carla. He's, the one, he's a fellow that sent me that... Uh, red metal flake steering wheel for the 64 which is amazing awesome they sent her a shifter said here take color to put this in a camaro it's one of them old b and m hammer shifters so that's probably what she, she'll definitely be running down there because those suck i actually pulled one out of chris uh chris wilkins's camaro the other day in a parking lot put him a b and m in there right in the parking lot set it up adjust it's perfect first try he he loves it now so but those suck. They always end up ripping the cable. They're at such a steep angle, it always rips the shifter cable. So. Uh. We gotta glue that back on. Yeah. But can't beat the price. Thank you very <laughs> yeah. much, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna see about fitting that in there. Which one are you on the front one? The one I was just on. Oh, we gotta put the nuts on all of them first. All right, shifter's in. in his RX-7. He's going to go run at Bristol. So I'm going to fix this for him. Got all 12 part. 28s, 32s. That was loose. Got his carburetor done, come over here and bolt it on, and it it fired right up and idles clean. It revs way better than it revved before. So, and for y'all folks who don't know, there's Robert Peak right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he did a little painting, changed up the look of the little RX7 a little bit, and it looks, I like it a lot better like this than it was with that green. Yeah, it looks a lot better. That so, better. yeah. Well, you care to get in there and fire it up? Let's we'll see if she'll fire without any pump shots. She ought to. Oh yeah, it, it, it ought to run. 
run good. Because See, before, when you started up like this, even on a hot day like this, it wouldn't stay high. Yeah. It wouldn't stay, you know. Yeah, well, and you'd have to pack the gas and yeah, well, to get it started. Well, the slop is... You don't have ever have any, the old straight axes ever have any slop in them like this right here? The kingpin's been rebuilt. I rebuilt yeah, kingpin's new, he bought a new kingpin kit and everything, put them in there. And but see that movement? Just a little. The other side was terrible. Yeah, it was like over half inch. Yeah, but it's got new pins in it. You can see all new. He bought the whole kit for new pins and everything. But that dude, this piece inside this axle right here, this is what's war. So we'll show you how to take the pin and fix it. Out. See what's got the notches? Wait a minute. There it is, yeah. The right. notches, you rotate around and stick the round side facing in with a notch and you hammer it through. <laughs> yep, and it'll tighten it right up like Dick's hat band. It mm -hmm. won't come out. Simple fix, crude and effective, but that's the old one. We were talking about do. taking the axle out and welding it, weld it and re honing it and all that stuff. And I was like, well, I said, why don't you take that pin and flip that dude around where the round side goes against the axle and it'll actually fit in the groove. He ain't got nothing on there. I'll show you that pin. So here's the old pin right there. We we'll look at this dude right here. You see how that notch is right there? That fits into that notch, just like that. And it's got some slop to it, and it still lets that dude move around like that. That's where you get your movement. So, take your pin, rotate it around to the round side, drive it in there. It'll go in that notch, and it'll take up all the slack and you're good to go. We ground this one out just checking the theory out, just see if it'd work. Tighten it right up with this old pin that's busted and everything. You see where it's split. This is original pins out of it, and this is original pin out of it. So, it'll tighten it right up, simple, crude, and effective, and might save you some money along the way. So, we took the other side, and he took the other wheel all apart and all that shit and looking at it. So, this side, just going to flip a pin and knock it back in. I need to tap my pin up and rotate the pin. The pin, the, the groove part, just rotated a little bit. Move? Yeah, a little bit. What do we got to do now? I just need a hammer on that. There's a big long bolt laying over there. So, come over here. Had just a little slop in the front end, so we're not we're not doing that shit no more. No slop nowhere. This how much is tight. No more, no more shadow of a doubt, no more. Pin going back in. Just need a little more beef flesh. Should tighten her up nicely. Can't wait to see this thing make place again. How about y'all? I miss it so bad. I miss this car. That's gonna come out. Here you go. We'll take that big round ramp. Put it back in there. She's tight. I don't see no movement now. No more slot. That's the tire one. There you go. Easy fix. Surprisingly. Yeah. All right. These are the heads I'm starting with. These are going on the 74. They're a 76 CC. They're a junk head. I got one of them cleaned up over there. Checked all the clearances. Uh, checked the coal bind where it happened. How much lift I can actually run. So you take this, you measure, and there's all the math for it. I would explain all the math and stuff to you, but it's kind of, I'm sure nobody really wants to hear all that. Like, for instance, your installed height, 1.7 installed height, which is what this is on the intake side. And it's a 1.775 on the exhaust side. Same, exhaust side, 1.753, I put that down. It's actually a one point seven seven five but I put a five three just to see how tight I could get the uh, the gap between coal bind 
So all you do is subtract your, your lift from that installed height. And it tells you at what point your uh, valve spring will be, will hit coal bind. And also between that, it tells you how much lift you have between here and here. Now you can take and cut the surface down, or you can cut down the retainer, or either one or both, and get a whole bunch more lift of that. So, see, before that touches there, that's what I'm talking about, how far you can go. Before you can go before that, it hits that. So, this is what the heads look like. They are the garbage. 624s, yes I know, these are prone to cracks and they're prone to all this other stuff, but I don't have anything else, so I have to use them. It's the only way I can get the compression down low enough to boost the 74 motor without pulling out and rebuilding it. And I need it done by the toy run, which is in a couple months, and I miss driving it, so. I've never seen this before. <laughs> Crazy. And I'm gonna run these things. There they are. A lot of cleaning. Got the valves all lapped. A little bit of paint on them. Still got to chase the threads, but I'm getting a little paint on so I don't rust overnight sitting outside. It's got to assemble them now.